There is nothing quite like being on top of things and having the time to actually tune in and read your comments when the video goes live. So welcome back to another episode of Hermitcraft. I'm just kind of wandering over towards dock area because of the Easter egg hunt. I was not actually supposed to hide my egg over here. And so thanks to all of you, I've seen the mistake that I've made. I've let Doc know I've actually hid his egg over here in this area. So I guess he'll have to search two areas now, which is, you know, <laughs> a little bit harder for him. So uh, thanks for commenting on the previous video. That That's what I was trying to say, you know, that I, I actually got to tune in and read the comments as all y'all watching the video. I am also over here because apparently Impulse left me something at his base. I, I don't know what it is, but let's go in and see if we can find out. And he hasn't found my Easter egg just yet. We're actually in the hunting phase now, which is what I'll be doing at some point in this episode. Looking for all the eggs that have been hidden in my own base. Oh, it's another one of these, is it? Why do bees have sticky hair? <laughs> because they use a honeycomb. Impulse has got a, a very fancily decorated shop here. These interiors are gorgeous. I've also uh, had a chat with him and now I know what it is that he left here for me. It's actually, I think he was just advertising his, uh, his excellent shop that he's got over here. So if I want to finish our tower, we need three stacks of dark prismarine. That means that we're gonna need three stacks of these. So over here at Gemini Tay's beautiful overgrown garden area, she might have a shop for Prismarine. I know she's got a Prismarine farm. So Gem has a Bones, Bows and Arrows shop. So I've left a little request in this barrel. Can you craft me three stacks of Dark Prismarine? To sweeten the deal a bit, you know, I think a diamond a stack is probably fair, but we'll throw in some iron blocks too. And with that little errand taken care of, we can get to the Easter egg hunting now. And you know what? While I was working on the tower over here, by the way, thank you for all the lovely feedback on this. Really glad to see people enjoyed this build as much as I did. Yeah, when working on this, I topped up on some iron and uh, just noticed that right there. And when I break the block below it, it might pop off and we'll find out whose this is. And that, I believe, is pearlescent moon as an egg. Oh, it's going to be adorable to see all of these, right? And that does, of course, mean if we find all of them. I also found uh, another one while working in the area, too. And it was not this one right here from Scar. Okay. Oh, hot tub stream. <laughs> oh, the memes. Excellent. The one I found was somewhere up there. There it is. And I've uh, enderpearled into it, which damaged it. But yes, so that one was Doc's. And while in this spot we should check all the uh, all the nooks and crannies, here's another one. This one is a little stress monster. And there are a lot of little spots down the bottom here. I'm going to have to be super careful not to miss every little bit. As there's tons of spaces for hiding them, right? No. No, I am not going to die to an endermite. Oh, that was very close. Ah, this one here looks like Cleo's. If, if only I could punch it. So if you know the layout of the base, I've just checked everything on the inside of this spot, the tower. And walking through here leads us down to our portal. And I saw the trapdoor and I thought, you can hide these item frames in water. <laughs> what do you know? There's one right here. And that is a little mini XB crafted. And when I was in my base the other day, I was checking up on this thing over here because I thought that it might have backed up. This is where we unload... Uh, our items and then I spotted inside of the hopper another one that appears to be Iskal yep there you go and both of those popped into my inventory nice and so now again I have to check every little nook and cranny and in my base there is a lot of little aha that looks like full symmetry okay every little spot needs checking even all the way down here I guess someone might have gone in where the villager was right oh now I'm stuck here so the top area is all checked up on and uh, now I gotta look down in this area and we've gotta get a bit ruthless here. Wherever there's a chest, something can be hidden in it. You know, there might be one like right behind there. So I guess if I wanna be really thorough, I'm gonna have to like temporarily rip apart parts of my base just to check every little gap. And uh, I'm kind of lucky I noticed that there's a gap here. I should have actually plugged this in at one point or another. And up here, that's, that's XB, isn't it? Okay, so I feel like I've explored the main part of my base, and this is how many we've got so far. Ten in total. The place I most expected to find them would be down here, because as we descend to the lower part, I'd actually left this open, 
<laughs> so there's like a ton of little spaces to hide something here, but I don't know if anyone knew that about my base, so we might not even find anything here. Ah, well it looks like Joe Hills did, and I just came from this direction, and I'm kind of lucky that I turned around, because now we found Joe's egg. Now here is where it turns into some straight up bad news, because where I finished the wastelands above, I, uh, I didn't put any torches down below. And I'm pretty sure that all of this would count as my base. So we need to explore it all, oh, and currently it's just a big old mob farm. Stay away from me, creeper. Right, and with that lit up, it actually looks like this area is completely devoid of any eggs. Well, down here in the basement of the basement, I've I found nothing in here at all. Now, the rules of the game mean that I probably need to explore the exterior of the building. All of this probably counts as well, right? All this area that I've been building in. And technically speaking, the entirety of the mini wastelands over here is a legit place to hide this. And I guess that would include the kelp tower over here as well. And I have actually explored all of these places, every nook and cranny I can think of, and I haven't found any more eggs. So that concludes the hunt for now, and I will be on the lookout with various bits of time I get here and there. Hopefully we'll find a few more before the episode ends. But anyway, you might have spotted just a moment ago that there was a chest over here and uh, this is from Jem. Initially she left me some prismarine and then I sent her a message saying thank you and also I'd ordered some dark prismarine so we've got that as well and you know what this means we're gonna now finish the roof of the tower and I have done that with plenty of blocks to spare because I always like to try and save blocks in this game and so I very tediously built the bottom halves of these blocks with <laughs> slabs so that I could just save a little bit overall so it took me a lot longer to do and you know from here it looks pretty cool doesn't it but then again from lower down it starts to fade away the fact that it's there but yeah actually you know what <laughs> it does look all right you just might not really notice unless you pay attention that there's actually a different material up there Oh yeah, and alongside that, I also came over here and just built a little something to go on the end of this. And the original plan was to have lots of these little walkways connecting together lots of different buildings, but beyond the original building, I didn't really have a plan for everything else. And you know what, we got neighbors in this area and we don't have complete control over everything we're doing. So that's actually concluded that bit. The kelp farm over here is finished. We've only got one more building to create in this area now. And so for the next part of this video, I headed over here to the shopping area for Season 9. Doesn't it look absolutely gorgeous? Don't I look absolutely gorgeous? Are you having a bit of a throwback right now to Season 8? And there is a perfectly good reason for this Doom guy to be dressed up once again, and that's because I wanted to have a little bit of fun. I wanted to go on an adventure involving some axolotls. And so I met up with Joe Hills, who has an axolotl shop here in the shopping area. We're actually in part of it right now. This is the top tier, and there is absolutely tons and tons of space for shopping in the future. Joe has been very diligent going around and lighting it up for all the other hermits to make it nice and safe away from those pesky creepers. And because I had not been here before, I actually had a little bit of trouble navigating over and I got hit by a bunch of pillagers doing one of their patrols on the way. Well, this is off to a good start. Uh, oh, wow. Yeah. Oh, it opens up over here and there's the prison. Yeah, that's what I was saying. So, so uh, Cleo, Jevin, and I blew this all up. Here, go through that door. Okay, I will because uh -oh. there are pillagers trying to attack me. Ooh. Check this out. This is the best thing I've ever built. That's awesome. It's, uh, <laughs> it's the Guppy Geyser. It's basically an infinite fish fountain. Oh, man. That's both cruel and amazing. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> oh, man. I'm just going to want to sit here and like look at all the different ones that come up, you know, because there's so many different patterns and color combinations. Yeah, we were thinking that when uh, Corrales gets back, we could put in different chests where you bet on which color comes up next. Oh, that's such you a cool idea. Take a diamond, leave a diamond type thing. Honor system. We're not going to redstone it, you know. And everyone wins tropical fish. <laughs> exactly. There are so many tropical fish. We will never go hungry on the server. We got kind of a multi-level setup in the shopping district. We've got the first level up there was a big lush cave. Then we got this huge shelf. <gasps> oh, area. oh, gosh. You okay? I, I didn't have my wings on. <laughs> oh, sorry. Ah, well, ah, luckily, you caught the slime, fault. right? You caught I, the slime. I, I have fall feather falling saved me this time. But now I understand why there was slime everywhere. It's to save yeah. my life. <laughs>
So a lot of falling. And then, yeah, that bubble column takes you right back up. Ah. And it's an accidental uh, fish spawner, too, apparently. So the fish are actually just spawning inside this, like, one-by-one one column, it would seem. And exactly. going straight up. That means they can yep. also knock me, the player, out, <laughs> which would be unfortunate. Yeah, you got to kind of pay attention. Yeah. Which is something I'm not great at. Wow. So all of this is the, the mm. shopping area to be. Oh, yeah, there's a oh, pillager I... on your slime blocks. <laughs> yep. He's going to ah. try and shoot me. Let me see if I can get him. Oh, ah, that's adorable. But yeah, so all the way down here on the lowest level is where our axolotl shop is, or my axolotl shop. But, you know, it's, I like to think of it as the communities. Yeah. I'm glad I got so my wings just... on now because there is a lot of lava down here. Oh, definitely. Yeah, we've ah. got, uh, just so you know, we've got a bubble column back up inside of this waterfall. Oh, yeah. Right here. So that'll take you to that next level, and then you can take the one back out to the exit if you ever are short on rockets. Sweet. And then here I've seen you've got tons of renamed... Oh, man. <laughs> yep. And oh, you this must have buttons. taken you a while to name them all. Uh, you know, I just basically listed pe characters from, like, plays and shows and movies and books and stuff. So I was I was actually really curious to uh, learn how you made this farm because you described it as being accidental. Sure, both the tropical fish farm and the axolotl farm were purely accidental. I happen to have water in a place that they seem to naturally spawn very quickly. Mm. And I guess and... maybe there's not a lot of other places where they water, and so they they're at the spot you're at. Exactly. So directly under my house, back at the main spawn area, is a small pool next to where I do my prototyping work. Yeah. Because I've got like a big cave. And so while I'm just building prototypes of my builds, axolotls just spawn. I go scoop them up and I keep building, you know? <sighs> yeah, I, I had a bit of a proposal that we could go on an adventure together. This is something I didn't get around to doing last season. And uh, I, I totally forgot I was actually going to change my skin back to being an axolotl today. But one thing I really wanted to do when they were introduced was raid an ocean monument with them like they showed in the trailer. So I went and changed my skin and then logged back in and me and Joe debated how we were gonna raid this ocean monument. So rather than use TNT and cheese the killing of the Elder Guardians, we decided that we'd do it the intended way. We'd go in the front door and bring with us an army of axolotls. Alrighty, so let's get out of here. Like I said, the fastest way is this bubble column right here will take us to the upper, uh, to the mid level, and then we can take the next one. Yeah, it looks like this could also be turned into an accidental ink sack farm. Oh, it also is. I've been thinking about <laughs> opening an accidental ink generator thing as well. That's great. Because <laughs> every time I'm over there, I'm killing glow squids. I have a lot of glow ink. And so we ventured off to the location of an ocean monument that I'd scouted out a few days ago. It looked like it hadn't been raided, and we came prepared with night vision and water breathing potions, and of course, a whole bunch of axolotls. All right, I, I think the best time to unleash the axolotls is when we're actually inside. Here we go. Okay, I'm gonna drink a potion of night vision. Oh my god, I should have done that first. The water breathing. Because I have come straight into the, the trouble. In we go! Right, I'm in. <laughs> Are you in? On my way. Okay, that turned out to be pretty good, because now that I'm in, it's like, oh, where is everyone? So here's what I was wondering, right? This is a dead end. Mm -hmm. Are there just dead ends from the beginning? Or can you actually navigate? You can't navigate to where the Elder Guardians are I would without breaking you blocks. Must be able to. But we haven't got the Wait. effect yet. Oh, what if this one's Does that already mean been raided? Else might have raided it? Yeah, already? it could be. Um, hmm. That's very curious then. So do you Oh no no no. Whoa, no, no, there's the effect. That's we weird. just weren't close enough. So maybe you have to break in to get to the point where the Elder Guardian thing triggers now. I wonder if that's in the code. It could be. That must be intentional. And so another trip down memory lane to the myth busting world, and the answer is the Elder Guardian doesn't have any special code to know if you've broken blocks or not. Yeah, it just happened to be a coincidence that it was after we were able to break a couple of blocks and actually navigate to all of the Elder Guardians inside of the temple that then we got the mining fatigue effect. And it does make me wonder about the design of this thing because, you know, a dead entrance right at the beginning, you're in here, you get the mining fatigue and then you're in a whole world of trouble. But I know what y'all are going to say, you can just bring along a milk bucket with you, right? Which is what we did, but we had also just chucked those potions. Anyway, let's get back to the Hermitcraft episode. Oh, one of your axolotls is playing dead. 
Oh, and that one's attacking a guy. Oh, let me help you out, buddy. Let me help you all out. Oh, your axolotl's a wrecking house over here. Nice. This is a beautiful thing. Woo! The healing power of friendship. Whoa, you're right. There is the Elder Guardian up there. Oh, they're on it. They are absolutely on it. I, I think I might leave them to take it on and see how they do. Oh, they're playing dead. Let me uh, consolidate. Are you seeing this? Yeah, they, they seem like they're doing pretty well. There's so many of them playing dead right now. It's uh, Go for it, Eleanor. It's kind of a beautiful sight. Like a weird, like a piece of Can art. Can we get it? Yeah, and I think most of the Elder God uh, axolotls survived. Woo! Okay, I've, I've got all of mine now. I've got Buster, I've got Glenn, okay. Leonardo, Ophelia. There's Horatio back here. <laughs> Outstanding. Yeah, I, love I, I wasn't paying names. attention to which ones I put down, so I'm just grabbing whatever. You know how wolves have an indication of their health on their tail? Yeah, do these do that? I they don't know. They don't. It would probably be a really good idea if they did. Okay, they're all sort of focused on the Elder Guardian now. Okay, cool. I'm, I'm dropping a few more here. This looks so cool. I'm just kind of filming it with, like, F1 on. <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. Oh no! Okay, definitely lost an axolotl there, and another one. So yeah, they, they and another two. Wow. Right, we might have to. Yeah, that's it. Get in there and finish yeah, it. Yeah, I got off. him with the axe. Hey, he dropped a sponge. Or, oh, I found the last guardian. Nice. nice. Last elder one. So for this one, should we unleash all the axolotls and then help them? Here we go. Buster, Ron Swanson, Trevor. Bad Janet, Eleanor, Hamlet, Hamlet's father, Michelangelo, and behold, Doctor T. J. Eckelberg. Dora Winfred and Rose's dad Pete and it's Whoa! Down. They got him before we could I was gonna try and get an exit in. Okay, so I think I think our adventure here is uh, concluded then probably if there's no sponges. So then after killing all three elder guardians, we made our way out to safety and tallied up the results, which does sound kinda cruel. So 24, 28, 32. So we lost 33 axolotls, and these are the brave survivors. That helped us conquer the monument and get two sponges. <laughs> two sponges and two guardian heads. That's, That's it. That's all we get. I'm, I'm sure that they will consider it worth it. So 33 dead axolotls. Was it worth it? Well, it certainly makes the whole process a lot easier for the player. And uh, here's the thing. The only thing we got out of it was a wet sponge and an elder guardian head each because this temple had no sponge rooms, which is what I was, you know, hoping to find. Either way, it was a fun adventure and great to see the axolotls in action. They are definitely great companions, but you do need to bring a lot of them, as you saw. Oh, and with our adventure concluded, I guess we're almost back to normal. The Easter egg hunt is going to conclude very soon. And I did actually find another Easter egg, and it was all the way down at the very bottom of this spot. ZF had put one of the eggs all the way down the bottom there. So I've been extending my search somewhat and coming back here to the base and doing another pass, I found another one. And I'm pretty sure I would have noticed that. So Wells, I think you've been a bit late to the game. I've been through this room several times. There's no way I missed that. I think Wells might have been a bit late to put down his eggs. And uh, that, that's an egg. Ah. I think I've looked up and thought it was a lantern a couple of times, so let's grab that. And of course the item decided to just pop itself up onto the roof. That's b 0 I believe. And I've been checking every little nook and cranny I can think of. I'm just wondering, is it actually possible to put that there before it connects and then do that? It kind of is. You could probably hide one inside of a wall. Oh, except it pops off. I am so stumped, I've been looking in all the little gaps. I've actually been like starting to take out some blocks and look behind things. I can't find any gaps. And I did find a couple of like really good hiding places on the top of these trees, which I didn't actually jump up here and look at before. But now I really do feel like I've looked just about everywhere and there's still quite a few eggs to be found. And I just looked it up. There were 18 of us playing in total. So that means, myself not included, just three more. So we found all of these, but three. And I am hoping that I'll get to, you know, show you these locations, these spots in a future episode. I cannot wait to see where they've been hidden, actually. I am really, really impressed.
Also, Beef messaged me and uh, was saying that he found all of them but mine. There it is down there. So we also have the added excitement of finding out who discovered mine, or, or better yet, who couldn't discover my hiding places. Like, Jevin also told me that he couldn't find uh, my easter egg. There it is. Excellent. And we actually have to drop off this easter egg basket back to Jevin. I've just kind of realized this probably wouldn't be at his base, right? And so over here, you can actually see the progress of all the other hermits. So you can see that Joe, Grian, Wells, Zed, Cub, and Impulse, they all found my eggs and quite a few other ones too. And I hope that we can get these heads back at some point. It'd be really nice to have them in my future base in like a memento room. Oh, and just a reminder, you don't win by the amount that you found in your own base. You win by the amount that other players couldn't find. So you might be thinking that I'm out of it, but uh, I actually don't know yet. We don't know who's going to win this. Oh, and if there's a tie, there'll be a tiebreaker mini game as well. So it's not over just yet. But that is going to be it for me this episode as I've ran out of time and honestly just spent most of my time searching my own base when I, I could have been doing other things. But it was a lot of fun and I hope it was fun for you too watching. So if you enjoyed it be sure to leave a like, thanks as always for the support and I'll be seeing you soon with another episode of Hermitcraft. Bye bye!